Welcome to Math with Mr. J. In this video, I'm going to go through a mini course on converting between fractions, decimals, and percents. We will go through decimals to fractions and decimals to percents, then fractions to decimals and fractions to percents, then percents to fractions and percents to decimals. Everything is put into chapters and time stamped, so feel free to jump around. Let's start with converting decimals to fractions and jump into our examples here, starting with number one, where we have 0.9, 9 tenths. Now, when we convert a decimal to a fraction, we need to take a look at the place the decimal ends. So does it end in the tenths, hundredths, thousandths? ten thousandths, or whatever the case may be. We use that place to determine the denominator of the fraction. And then whatever number we have on the right side of the decimal, so the decimal digit or digits, will be the numerator. For example, number one, we have a nine, that's going to be our numerator. Now that decimal ends in the tenths place, so our denominator is going to be ten. So nine over 10, 9 tenths. Now, once we have the fraction, we can look to simplify if possible. 9 tenths is in simplest form. The only common factor between 9 and 10 is 1. So again, this fraction is in simplest form. Now, if we look at the decimal, we can read that as 9 tenths. And then looking at the fraction, we can read that as 9 tenths. These are equal. One is just a decimal the other a fraction. Let's move on to number two, where we have 0 0.09, so nine hundredths. This looks similar to number one. We have a nine on the right side of the decimal, but that decimal ends in the hundredths place. So our denominator is going to be 100. So nine over 100, nine hundredths. The only common factor between 9 and 100 is 1, so this is in simplest form. Moving on to number 3, we have 0 0.2, 2 tenths. 2 is going to be our numerator, and this decimal ends in the tenths place, so 10 is going to be our denominator. So 2 over 10, 2 tenths. Now this fraction is correct, 2 tenths is correct, but we can simplify here. We have a greatest common factor of 2 that we can divide the numerator and denominator by. 2 divided by 2 is 1, and then 10 divided by 2 is 5, so we get 1 over 5, 1 fifth. The only common factor between 1 and 5 is 1, so this is in simplest form now. So 2 tenths as a decimal equals 2 over 10, 2 tenths as a fraction, and we were able to simplify that fraction to 1 fifth. Let's move on to number 4, where we have 0 0.75, 75 hundredths. Here we have 75 to the right of the decimal, and this decimal ends in the hundredths place. So 75 is our numerator, and then 100 is our denominator, 75 over 100, 75 hundredths. And this is correct, but we can simplify here. We have a greatest common factor of 25 that we can divide the numerator and denominator by. 75 divided by 25 gives us three, and then 100 divided by 25 gives us four. So we get three over four, three fourths. The only common factor between three and four is one, so this is now in simplest form. Moving on to number five, we have 0 0.014, 14 thousandths. We have 14 to the right of the decimal, and this ends in the thousandths place. So 14 is our numerator, and then 1,000 is our denominator. So 14 over 1,000, 14 thousandths. And this is correct, but we can simplify. We have a greatest common factor of 2 that we can 
divide the numerator and denominator by. 14 divided by 2 is 7. 1,000 divided by 2 is 500. So 7 over 500 here, 7 five hundredths. The only common factor between 7 and 500 is 1, so this is in simplest form. And then lastly, let's move on to number 6, where we have 3.36. 3 and 36 hundredths. So for this one, we have a whole number, which don't let that throw us off. All we need to do is focus on the decimal and do the same thing we did for all of the other examples. So we can start by writing our whole number, 3, and then we worry about the decimal. So we have 36 to the right of the decimal, and it ends in the hundredths. So 36 is our numerator, and then 100 is our denominator. So we get 3 and 36 over 100, 3 and 36 hundredths. So whenever we have a whole number like that, we just rewrite the whole number and then we can focus on the decimal being converted to a fraction. Now 36 hundredths can be simplified. We have a greatest common factor of four that we can divide the numerator and denominator by. So we rewrite our whole number and then focus on that fraction. 36 divided by four is nine. And then 100 divided by four is 25. So we get three and then nine over 25. Three and nine twenty-fifths. The only common factor between nine and 25 is one. So this is in simplest form. So there's how to convert decimals to fractions. Let's move on to decimals to percents. Here's our section on converting decimals to percents. Let's jump into our examples, starting with number one, where we have 0 0.52, 52 hundredths. Now when going from a decimal to a percent, all we need to do is multiply by 100. Multiply the decimal by 100 and that will give us the percent. And remember, a quick way to multiply by 100 is to move the decimal twice to the right. So for number one, let's multiply by 100 by moving the decimal once, twice to the right. This gives us 52%. Now we don't need that decimal at the end, after the two, when we write our percent, since this is a whole number here we can leave that off. So for number one, our decimal 52 hundredths equals 52%. Let's move on to number two, where we have 0 0.01, so one hundredth. Let's multiply by 100 by moving the decimal once, twice to the right. So it comes after the one now, which gives us one percent, one hundredth, equals 1%. Let's move on to number three, where we have 0 0.9, 9 tenths. And I'm going to rewrite this decimal underneath because we're going to need a little more room for this one. So let's multiply by 100 by moving the decimal once, twice to the right. So we have a gap there. Now we need to fill that gap, that place, with a zero. So our percent here is 90%. 9 tenths equals 90%. Lastly, let's move on to number four, where we have 0 0.436, 436 thousandths. Let's multiply by 100. Once, twice to the right. So the decimal goes in between the three and the six. So we have 43.6 percent. 436 thousandths equals 43.6 percent. And that's it. That's how to convert decimals to percent. Let's move on to fractions to decimals. Here's our section on converting fractions to decimals. We will go through four examples. For numbers one and two, we will work through them by hand, so without a calculator. And then numbers three and four, we will work through those by discussing what we need to plug into a calculator. 
Let's jump into number one, where we have one eighth. Now, when we convert a fraction to a decimal, we can divide the numerator, the top number of the fraction, by the denominator, the bottom number of the fraction. So for number one, we need to do one divided by eight. So let's set this up, one divided by eight. Now, as far as one divided by eight, how many whole groups of eight in one? How many eights in one? Well, we can't do that. So we need to use a decimal and then a zero in order to work through the division. Remember, zeros to the right of a decimal or decimal digits do not change the value of the number. So we're able to do this. Now, once we have that decimal and the zero, we can bring the decimal straight up into the quotient, the answer. And I'm going to extend the division bar as well. Now we can think of this as 10 divided by eight. So how many whole groups of eight in 10? How many eights in 10? Well, one. So we need to put the one above the zero. Now make sure that one is above the zero, not the one. We used that zero in the tenths place and thought of this as 10. So the one needs to go above that zero in order to keep everything lined up correctly. Now we multiply one times eight, eight. Subtract 10 minus eight is two. Now we don't have a clean cut zero there at the bottom. So what we can do, we can use another zero that we can bring down to continue on. Now we have 20, 20 divided by eight. So how many whole groups of eight in 20? Well, two, that gets us to 16. Two times eight, 16. Subtract 20 minus 16 is four. So we still don't have that clean cut zero there at the bottom. So let's use another zero that we can bring down. So now we have 40, 40 divided by eight. How many whole groups of eight in 40? Well, five, and that hits 40 exactly. Five times eight is 40, subtract 40 minus 40 is zero. So now we have that clean cut zero there at the bottom. We went all the way over within our division problem and we have that zero at the bottom. So we are done. We get 0 0.125, 125 thousandths. One eighth equals 0 0.125. So 125 thousandths. Now you'll notice when I rewrote that decimal, I started with a zero and then the decimal. This is common when writing decimals because it and see the decimal. We don't want the decimal to get overlooked. So something to keep in mind. Let's move on to number two, where we have five twelfths. So we need to do five divided by 12. So let's set this up. We have five divided by 12. So five divided by 12, how many whole groups of 12 in five? Well, we can't do that. So we need a decimal and a zero in order to work through this. Bring the decimal straight up. We can extend this division bar here and we can think of this as 50 divided by 12. So how many whole groups of 12 in 50? Well, four, that gets us to 48. Now make sure that four is above the zero. Four times 12, 48. Subtract 50 minus 48 is two. So we need to continue on. Let's use another zero that we can bring down. And now we have 20. So 20 divided by 12. How many whole groups of 12 in 20? Well, one, that gets us to 12. So one times 12 is 12. Subtract 20 minus 12 is eight. Let's use another zero that we can bring down. And now we have 80. So 80 divided by 12. How many whole groups of 12 in 80? Well, six, that gets us to 72. So six here, six times 12, 72. Subtract 80 minus 72 is eight. Let's use another zero and keep going here. So we have 80 again. How many whole groups of 12 in 80? Well, six, six times 12, 72. Subtract 
we get eight. Now I'm going to stop there because that pattern is going to continue on forever. So we end up with a repeating decimal here. We get 0.41 and then those sixes repeat. They will never end. So again, a repeating decimal here. Now we have different options as far as how we want to write out this decimal. The first option, 5 twelfths equals 0 0.416, and then we put a bar above the 6. So we can put a bar above the repeating digit, or digits if we have multiple digits that repeat. The bar is a way for us to write out repeating decimals. And in this example, the bar above the 6 tells us that the 6 repeats. Or we can round, and we can round to whatever place we would like. But for this example, let's round to the tenths place and the hundredths place. Let's start with the tenths place. So 5 twelfths is approximately, and I'm using the approximately symbol here since we are rounding. It's not exact. Now, as far as rounding, we have a four in the tenths place with a one to the right in the hundredths. So this rounds to four tenths. Five twelfths is approximately four tenths. How about rounding to the hundredths place? Well, five twelfths is approximately, we have a one in the hundredths and then a six in the thousandths. So we round up here. Five twelfths is approximately 42 hundredths. So there are some options as far as working with repeating decimals. Let's move on to numbers three and four. Here are numbers three and four. Let's jump into number three where we have nine over 16, nine sixteenths. So we need to divide the numerator by the denominator. So plug in nine, the numerator, divided by 16, the denominator. This gives us 0 0.5625. So 5,625 ten thousandths. So let's write this up here. 9 sixteenths equals 0 0.5625. Five. Again, 5,625 ten thousandths. Now, another possibility here is to round this to make it shorter. So if we get long decimals or even repeating decimals, we can round. So for example, number one, we can round to the tenths place, hundredths place, whatever place we want to. Let's do tenths and hundredths here. So nine sixteenths is approximately and I'm using the approximately symbol here since we are rounding, it's not exact. Let's start with the tenths place. We have a five in the tenths with a six in the hundredths. So we round up. Nine sixteenths is approximately six tenths. Now let's round to the hundredths. So nine sixteenths is approximately, well, we have a six in the hundredths with a two in the thousandths. So this rounds to 56 hundredths. 9 sixteenths is approximately 56 hundredths. So some different options there as far as how we can write this out. Let's move on to number four where we have 30 over 35, 30 30 fifths. So we need to divide the numerator by the denominator. So plug in 30 divided by 35. That gives us 0 0.857142. Those six digits repeat and go on forever in that pattern. Now it can be very hard to tell if a decimal repeats if we have multiple repeating digits and the calculator cuts the decimal off before we can tell if it repeats. This is a good example of this because depending on your calculator, you may not be able to tell if this decimal repeats based on the number of digits shown on your calculator. 
Now, like I mentioned earlier, what we can do if we have a long decimal or a repeating decimal, we can round. But before we round here, let's write this out as a repeating decimal. 30 over 35, 30 30 fifths equals 0 0.85. 7142. And we can put a bar above those digits to show that they repeat. Now, our other option is to round. So let's do that. And we can round to whatever place we would like. But let's do the tenths and hundredths place again, starting with the tenths place. So we have 30, 30 fifths is approximately. Well, we have an eight in the tenths with a five to the right in the hundredths. So this rounds up to nine tenths. So 30 30 fifths is approximately nine tenths. Now let's round to the hundredths. So 30 30 fifths is approximately, and then we have a five in the hundredths with a seven to the right in the thousandths. So this rounds up as well. 30 30 fifths is approximately 86 hundredths. So there you have it. There's how to convert a fraction to a decimal. Let's move on to fractions to percents. Now let's take a look at converting fractions to percents. And just like last section, we will go through four examples. For numbers one and two, we will work through them by hand, so without a calculator. And then numbers three and four, we will work through those by discussing what we need to plug into a calculator. Now when converting fractions to percents, we can do this by dividing and then multiplying. We take the fraction and divide the numerator by the denominator, the top divided by the bottom. This will give us a decimal. We then need to convert that decimal to a percent by multiplying it by 100. And remember, a quick way to multiply by 100 is to move the decimal twice to the right. So we go from a fraction to a decimal and then that decimal to a percent. Let's jump into our examples, starting with number one, where we have three fourths. Well, we need to start by dividing the numerator by the denominator, three divided by four. So let's come down here and set this up. So three divided by four. Now, as far as three divided by four, how many whole groups of four in three? How many fours in three? Well, we can't do that. So we need a decimal after three and then a zero in order to start to work through this problem. Now remember, zeros to the right of a decimal or decimal digits do not change the value of a number. So we're able to do this. Now let's take the decimal and bring it straight up into where the quotient, the answer, will be. Now we can go through our division steps. I'm going to extend this division bar here. And now we can think of this as 30 divided by four. How many whole groups of four, how many fours in 30? Well, seven, that gets us to 28. Now make sure that seven is above the zero, not the three. Since we used that zero and thought of this as 30 divided by seven. Now we multiply, seven times four is 28. Subtract, 30 minus 28 is two. Now we don't have a clean cut zero at the bottom there. So what we can do, we can use another zero that we can bring down in order to continue the problem. So now we have 20, 20 divided by four, which is five. So let's put our five up here. Then multiply, five times four, 20. Subtract, 20 minus 20 is zero. So we went all the way over within our division problem and we have that clean cut zero at the bottom. So we are done, 0.75. So I'm going to come to the side here and rewrite our decimal. And I'm starting with a zero and then a decimal. This is typical when writing decimals because that's going to help us recognize we have a decimal here. It's going to help us see the decimal. So 0 
0.75. So 3 fourths in decimal form is 0.75. Let's multiply it by 100 to convert it to a percent. And a quick way to do that, again, move the decimal twice to the right. So once, twice. So the decimal is now here. This gives us 75%. And we don't need that decimal at the end since we have a whole number here. We can leave that off. So 3 fourths equals 75%. Let's move on to number two, where we have 7 fifteenths. So we need to do 7 divided by 15, the numerator divided by the denominator. So 7 divided by 15. Now 7 divided by 15, how many whole groups of 15 in 7? How many 15s in 7? Well, we can't do that. So let's use a decimal and a zero in order to work through this problem. I'm going to extend the division bar here and bring the decimal straight up. Now we can think of this as 70 divided by 15. So how many whole groups of 15 in 70? Well, four. That gets us to 60. Now we multiply. Four times 15 is 60. Subtract 70 minus 60 gives us 10. So we don't have that clean cut zero, we can continue on. So let's use another zero that we can bring down. So now we have 100, 100 divided by 15. How many whole groups of 15 in 100? Well, six, that gets us to 90. So let's put our six, then multiply six times 15 is 90. Subtract 100 minus 90 is 10, so we still don't have that clean cut zero. Let's use another zero that we can bring down. So we have 100 again, 100 divided by 15. How many whole groups of 15 in 100? Well, six. Six times 15 is 90. Subtract, we get 10 again. And you may notice that we have a pattern here, and this is going to give us a repeating decimal. It's never going to end. We can add as many zeros as we'd like and bring them down, and we're not going to get to that clean cut zero. And we end up with 100 again. So we have 100 divided by 15. How many whole groups of 15 in 100? Well, six, six times 15 is 90. Subtract 100 minus 90 gives us 10 again. And again, those sixes are going to continue forever. So what we can do here, I'm going to write the decimal off to the side. So we have 0 0.46666, and these continue on. We have a repeating decimal. So we have a few different options here, but before we get to that, we have our decimal, so we need to multiply by 100. Let's move the decimal once, twice to the right. So we end up with, 46.6 repeating percent. So how do we write this? The first way we can write 7 fifteenths equals 46.6 and then use a bar over the six to show that that digit repeats percent. The next way to write this percent is to round. And for this example, we're going to round to the tenths place. So at the bottom here, we see we have a six in the tenths with a six to the right in the hundredths place. This tells us to round up. So if we round to the nearest tenth, we have seven fifteenths is approximately, and I'm using the approximately symbol here since we are rounding. It's not exact. 46.7%. So rounding to the nearest tenth. You can also round to the nearest hundredth or whatever place you would like. And then the last option I'm going to mention is rounding to the nearest whole percent. And that's going to be the ones place. So if we look at the bottom here, we have a six in the ones place with a six to the right in the tenths 
So is this closer to 46% or 47%? Well, that six in the tenths place tells us to round up. This is closer to 47%. So 7 fifteenths is approximately 47%. So a few different options there as far as working with that repeating decimal. So when we come across repeating decimals, we can still write them as a percent. Or even if we come across long decimals that don't repeat, we're able to round those if we need to. Let's move on to numbers three and four. Here are numbers three and four. Let's jump into number three where we have 24 thirtieths. Well, we need to start by dividing the numerator by the denominator. So 24 divided by 30. So we plug in 24 divided by 30. That gives us 0 0.88 tenths. So that's 24 thirtieths as a decimal. Now we need to convert that decimal to a percent by multiplying it by 100. And again, we can do this by moving the decimal twice to the right. So once, twice to the right. And we can fill this gap, this place, with a zero. This gives us 80%. And we don't need that decimal at the end since we have a whole number here. We can leave that off. So 24 thirtieths equals 80%. Let's move on to number four, where we have 3 sixteenths. So we need to divide the numerator by the denominator. So we need to plug in 3 divided by 16. That gives us 0 0.1875. So 1,875 ten thousandths. So that's 3 sixteenths as a decimal. Now we need to multiply it by 100 to convert it to a percent. Let's do that by moving the decimal once, twice to the right. So the decimal goes in between the eight and the seven. That gives us 18.75%. So 3 sixteenths equals 18.75%. Percent. And I do want to mention we can round this to the nearest whole percent if needed. And all we need to do here is round to the ones place. So is this closer to 18% or 19%? Well, we need to take a look at the ones place here and the tenths place to the right. That seven tells us that we round up. So three sixteenths is approximately 19%. So this is exact right here, and then this is rounded to the nearest whole percent. So that's something to keep in mind, especially if we end up with a very long decimal or a repeating decimal. We can always round if need be. So there you have it. There's how to convert a fraction to a percent. Let's move on to percents to fractions. Now let's take a look at converting percents to fractions, starting with number one, where we have 23%. Now remember, percent means per 100. So we can think of this as for each 100 or out of 100. So all we need to do in order to go from a percent to a fraction is to take away the percent symbol and rewrite whatever we have with a denominator of 100. So put it over 100. Once we have the fraction, we can simplify if possible. So for 23%, we write this as 23 over 100, 23 hundredths. And that's it, that's our fraction. Now this fraction cannot be simplified. The only common factor between 23 and 100 is one, so we are done. Again, 23% equals 23 over 100 as a fraction, 23 hundredths. Let's move on to number two, where we have 10%. So 
So we need to drop that percent symbol and put this over 100. So 10 over 100, 10 hundredths. And that's 10% as a fraction, but we can simplify here. We have a greatest common factor of 10 that we can divide the numerator and denominator by in order to simplify. So we need to divide the numerator by 10 and the denominator by 10. 10 divided by 10 gives us one, and then 100 divided by 10 gives us 10. So we get one over 10, one tenth. The only common factor between one and 10 is one, so this is in simplest form. We are done here. 10% equals 10 over 100, 10 hundredths, but we were able to simplify that to one over 10, one tenth. Let's move on to number three, where we have 94%. So let's write this as a fraction here. We have 94 over 100, 94 hundredths. And this is correct, but we can simplify here. We have a greatest common factor of two that we can divide the numerator and denominator by in order to simplify. 94 divided by two, that's 47. And then 100 divided by two is 50. So we get 47 over 50, 47 fiftieths. The only common factor between 47 and 50 is one, so we are done. Lastly, let's move on to number four, where we have 65%. So we write this as a fraction, as 65 over 100, 65 hundredths. And that is correct, but we can simplify again here. We have a greatest common factor of five that we can divide 65 by our numerator and 100 by our denominator. 65 divided by five gives us 13, and 100 divided by five gives us 20. The only common factor between 13 and 20 is one, so we are in simplest form, 13 over 20, 13 twentieths. So there you have it. There's how to convert percents to fractions. Let's move on to our last section percents to decimals. Here's our section on percents to decimals. Let's jump into our examples, starting with number one, where we have 85%. Now when going from a percent to a decimal, all we need to do is divide by 100. Divide the percent by 100, and that will give us the decimal. And remember, a quick way to divide by 100 is to move the decimal twice to the left. So for number one, let's divide 85% by 100. For 85%, the decimal comes after the five, after the ones place. So I'm going to rewrite this as 85 and then the decimal. We can always write a decimal after a whole number if need be. We typically don't write decimals or see them with a whole number though, because they aren't needed. So something to keep in mind. So to divide by 100 here, let's move the decimal once, twice to the left. That gives us 0 0.85, 85 hundredths. So 85% equals 0 0.85. Eight, five. Now when I rewrote that decimal, I started with a zero and then the decimal. This is common when writing decimals because it helps us recognize and see the decimal. We don't want the decimal to get overlooked. Let's move on to number two where we have 2%. I'm going to rewrite this underneath with a decimal and now we need to divide by 100. So let's move the decimal once twice to the left, and we need to fill this gap, this place, with a zero. So we get 0 0.02. 2% equals 0 0.02, two hundredths as a decimal. Let's move on to number three, where we have 70%. I'm going to rewrite this underneath with a decimal and divide by 100. So move the decimal once, twice to the left. So we get 0 0.70. 70% equals 0 
0.70, 70 hundredths as a decimal. Now, one more thing I do want to mention about number three. Remember, zeros to the right of decimal digits do not change the value of anything. So really, we can write this as 0 0.7 as well, so 7 tenths. So we took that zero on the end off. These decimals are equivalent, so they are both correct. So that's something to be aware of when working with decimals. Lastly, let's move on to number four, where we have 39.4%. So let's divide this by 100 in order to convert it to a decimal. So let's move the decimal once, twice to the left, and we end up with 0.394. So 39.4% equals 0 0.394. So 394 thousandths. So there you have it. There's how to convert percents to decimals. And that's it. That's our mini course on converting between fractions, decimals, and percents. I hope that helped. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, peace.